Residents of northeastern Japan are hearing of new challenges a year and a half after the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Workers at the nuclear plant are struggling with recurrent problems as they try to decommission the reactors. The reactors have been brought to a state of cold shutdown. The second phase of the plan to bring them under control has been completed. Experts say the temperature and pressure inside the reactors are generally stable. But troubles with the cooling water system have plagued workers. They built a system after the disaster to treat highly contaminated water and then used it to cool the reactors. The operator Tokyo Electric Power Company has reported 56 instances of tainted water leaks. Facilities to decontaminate water have stopped 12 times because of those leaks and because of problems with the power supply. Late last month, coolant water in three reactors temporarily fell below the necessary levels. Workers have also had troubles with facilities and equipment that were in use before the accident. Only 16 of the 41 thermometers in reactor number 2 are working properly. High radiation levels have prevented workers from replacing those that aren't working. Contaminated water levels have continued to rise at a pace of about 400 tons a day, and groundwater is flowing into the reactor buildings. That has filled almost 90% of the plant's storage tanks. The workers plan to add tanks with a total capacity of 470,000 tons to store the water for three years. But the work will require the cutting of trees at the plant. Now a story about the one that didn't get away. A Melbourne fisherman landing a monster bluefin tuna. Scientists are just as excited by the catch as the fisherman, saying it could shed some light on the impact of the radioactive fallout from the Japanese nuclear disaster. The moment a struggle ended and the fish landed. The one that didn't get away. Holy snapping tuna! The bluefin tuna, weighing in at 275 kilos and nearly 3 metres in length. That is insane! The species spawns in waters off Fukushima, Japan, site of the nuclear disaster 18 months ago. New Zealand scientists want to test if the fish was affected by any fallout. It's exactly the size of the fish that our scientists wanted. Fisherman expand test catches off Fukushima. Fishermen in Fukushima Prefecture have expanded their test catches to 10 types of marine products, 18 months after the nuclear accident. A fleet of 11 fishing boats left the port in Somo City early on Monday. Commercial fishing restarted on an experimental basis off Fukushima Prefecture in June. Catches were limited to one type of shellfish and two kinds of octopuses. The Prefectural Fisheries Association says consumers purchase the marine products caught in the area and trust the radiation tests that were carried out. It's another bullshit experiment. So it decided to expand the catches to ten types of marine products, including one type of crab and one type of squid starting on Monday. The association says it has found no unsafe levels of radiation in any of the ten types of seafood. The fresh catch will be shipped to local shops later in the day after being tested for radiation. The local fishery cooperative official says fishing operations in the area are slowly returning to normal. But he says fishermen will have to be patient, as it will take time before they can resume full-scale operations. The ripples from the Fukushima nuclear accident continue to spread abroad. Clashes have broken out between anti-nuclear protesters and police in India. The clashes in the southern state of Tamil Nadu have left one person dead and many injured. The violence erupted on Monday as thousands of people camped on the beach near the Kudankulam nuclear power plant. Police say at least four of their officers were hurt. Another protest spilled over to the Tutankoran district, 40 kilometers north of the plant. The local government says that more than 350 residents carrying clubs gathered at the local police station. Police fired at protesters, killing one. 
The protests began last year after the Fukushima disaster. The demonstrators have prevented the new the demonstrations rather have prevented the new power plant from operating as scheduled. India is trying to promote nuclear power generation to meet surging energy demand in its fast-growing economy, but many citizens are worried about the plant's safety. An NHK research laboratory has won the top award at the International Broadcasting Convention. The Media Expo in Amsterdam is Europe's largest. NHK Science and Technology Research Laboratories received the International Honor for Excellence Award. The award recognizes the lab's pioneering role in high-definition TV broadcasting technology. We need to commit ourselves and, I believe, all our efforts, even our failure, will pay off. Past recipients include film director James Cameron and New York's Metropolitan Opera House. This is the first time a research institute has received the prize. Residents of northeastern Japan are hearing of new challenges a year and a half after the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Workers at the nuclear plant are struggling with recurrent problems as they try to decommission the reactors. The reactors have been brought to a state of cold shutdown. 
The second phase of the plan to bring them under control has been completed. Experts say the temperature and pressure inside the reactors are generally stable. But troubles with the cooling water system have plagued workers. They built a system after the disaster to treat highly contaminated water and then used it to cool the reactors. The operator Tokyo Electric Power Company has reported 56 instances of tainted water leaks. Facilities to decontaminate water have stopped 12 times because of those leaks and because of problems with the power supply. Late last month, coolant water in three reactors temporarily fell below the necessary levels. Workers have also had troubles with facilities and equipment that were in use before the accident. Only 16 of the 41 thermometers in reactor number 2 are working properly. High radiation levels have prevented workers from replacing those that aren't working. Contaminated water levels have continued to rise at a pace of about 400 tons a day, and groundwater is flowing into the reactor buildings. That has filled almost 90% of the plant's storage tanks. The workers plan to add tanks with a total capacity of 470,000 tons to store the water for three years.